We here at Hedge talking about new versions of offshoot, post lab, and also sustainable booth design. This is a Synity Gear News video supported by B and H and CVP. Welcome from IBC 2023. I'm here at the Hedge booth with Paul. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Before we dive into your new products, there's one thing I want to point out. You guys won a stand design award from IBC and. It's one of those things we've been talking about in the team. I mean, trade shows literally are some of the most unsustainable things in the world. If you look at all those booths, all those thousands of square meters of buildups that most of which go to the trash afterwards. But you guys have a different approach, right? Yeah, we thought that's super wasteful. We we originally sound engineers, so we come from live festivals. All signage there is reutilized. Nothing gets wasted. So Seven years ago when we started out, we built a booth and we've been reutilizing that since. We never trash anything. It's only, we also like to reuse the signing, but every year we have something new. So that's not possible, but that's the 1%. This year we really focused on innovating, not on the sustainability of the booth, but of the team. Like, it's like running a production. It, it drives out your team if you don't have enough people on set, same as a booth. So we have a double shift. And this year we sacrificed half of the meters for a backstage area. Where the, peop- where the team could chill out and have good lunch. So we have, we have a chef providing meals, but it's also way better, it's more healthy. So that's, we think that's something that's lacking in this industry, not in trade shows, but actually in video production. Like you, you need to hire more people on a production just to make sure you don't wear people out. Like it's crazy that there's overtime. That's true, I absolutely agree. And I think you've been doing a great job and it's nice that IBC recognizes that. Oh yes, lovely. Yep. Let's move into talking about your new product. You've been busy. I mean, you now, you know, like you started years ago with a software called Hedge for Mac, which is now offshoot. But now you have a whole host of uh, apps under your uh, wings, basically. Maybe just run us through the new stuff. (laughs) Yeah, it's quite a series of happy accidents uh, throughout the years. Uh, What's new this year is, well, obviously offshoot, the evolution of Hedge, together with Offshoot Pro and a full-blown version on iPad. That was just battle tested in the Arctic. It's faster than even on a Mac. So thanks Apple to iPad OS 17 because that's stellar if you want to do offloading on the go. So that's if I want to off- offload footage directly onto the iPad because I only have one port so I can't use an external SSD, right? You can with a switch. So there is now good USB switches around that can actually allow you to do two external drives. So you can either offload to the iPad or use the iPad as an in-between to go to SSDs or directly to SSDs. It's super fast. So we got 24 minutes on half a terabyte for red cards. So that's very well. And here goes my next question. iPhone 15 Pro Max, shooting ProRes, having USB-C. With crazy, with a pro even having USB 3 finally. So crazy transfer speed. So is that something for the future? Yeah, def- we're definitely looking in it to it. If, if, if it's going to work, yeah, it's an amazing vessel, amazing platform to be able to do mobile offloading. We gave one of our best of show awards to Blackmagic Design for their camera app, not for the actual camera, but for their camera app because it's actually quite an innovation. So I think there's a lot of interest in that in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. What other tools is are new? So new and offshore pro is offloading to S3. Look, again, for sustainability, we think it's silly that everybody buys these stacks of hard drives for productions and they just lie on a shelf dying. S3 is the perfect transfer drive. You put your proxies into S3, you take them out on the other end. That's way more sustainable and pretty doable with internet speeds and uh, low res proxies. Uh, that's new and offshoot. All the way in the other end of the spectrum, we, we've been a leader in LTO archiving with Canister for years, Mac only. Now we're releasing a Windows version. So everybody that's on Windows wants to work with LTO has just the same ease of use as on a Mac. We think the big thing this year is our technology preview for PostLab. So everybody that's used to working with bin locking on Avid, which we of course do through Mimic, we planted that concept on Final Cut Pro called event locking. So you can work together with your co-editors and use each other's libraries or events in the libraries while the others are working in it, you can still read them. And that's going to be in beta after IBC. Oh, that's interesting. So that kind of makes Final Cut Pro finally a multi-user software in a way? Very much so. Availability of, of the new versions of uh, Offshoot and also PostLab? And we're going to take two weeks to cool down from IBC and then we're going to release all the new apps uh, start of October and the beta program for PostLab. 
And just for people who don't know, your pricing is a little bit different than many other companies, right? I mean, the way it works, it's not a subscription. Yeah, we don't do subscriptions. We don't think that works for this industry because you need to be able to use something offline just as well as online. So all our apps are a perpetual license with one year of updates. And after a year, if you think we released a feature that's useful to you, you can buy an update for two thirds of the original price. Great. Thank you, Paul. And good luck uh, with the rest of the show. I mean, it's one last day, but you're in a very, very busy hall and lots of people are interested in your product. So congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned to Synity for a lot more from IBC 2023. And please don't forget to subscribe to all our channels.